Integrals can also be used to find the area of surfaces that you obtain by rotating the graph of a function about the coordinate axes. Specifically, let's consider the graph of a function f over the interval between a and b and rotate the graph about the x-axis. Then you get a solid of revolution whose surface area is given as 2 pi times the definite integral from a to b of f of x times the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. This integral formula can be obtained uh, from the limit of the truncated cone approximation to the surface area. So this is obtained by taking the graph of a function f over the interval between a and b and rotating the graph about the x-axis gives us a surface of revolution um, whose uh, bits uh, we can approximate by subdividing the interval a b into smaller subintervals as uh, surfaces of truncated cones for each of which the uh, surface area is given by this formula, 2 pi times the average uh, y value, average height, times um, uh, the, uh, square root of, uh, the square root um, of delta x plus the square of delta y, and factoring out um, the delta x from underneath the square root, then letting n go to infinity, that is delta x go to zero, we get the above integral formula. Okay, let's calculate some surface areas. Which integral can be used to find the surface area of a sphere of radius r? Pause the video, select your answer, and then evaluate the integral that you selected. Okay, I hope you paused it and I've selected that first integral. Well, first, let's see how that's obtained. So to evaluate, to find the area of a sphere of radius r, we may uh, consider the function, um, the square root of r squared minus x squared. And as x varies from zero to r, we get a quarter circle in the first quadrant of radius r centered at the origin. Rotating that about the um, x-axis, we get half a sphere. Therefore, for the total surface area of the sphere, we need to multiply that by 2. So that's 2 times 2 pi times the integral from 0 to r of f of x times the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. So let's compute the derivative of f and its square. So the derivative of f is minus x over the square root of r squared minus x squared. And when we square that, we get f prime of x squared to be um, x squared divided by r squared minus x squared. So using that in, in the formula, we get 4 pi times the integral from 0 to r of, well, the square root of r squared minus x squared times 1 plus x squared over r squared minus x squared dx. And we uh, bring it to a common denominator in the second um, um, factor of r squared minus x squared we get 4 pi times the integral from 0 to r of the square root of r squared minus x squared times r squared minus x squared plus x squared. So those terms cancel. This is all divided by r squared minus x squared under the square root still. So then we get the square root of r squared there. That's just r. So that's a constant that we can factor out. Um, but the, more importantly, these square root of r squared minus x squared is what cancels also. And so we are left with the integral of r with respect to x. Uh, evaluating that is just 4 pi r times the integral from 0 to r dx. And that is just r. So the previous factor of r, we get 4 pi r squared as expected for the surface area of a sphere of radius r. Let's look at the next question. Find the area of the surface that is obtained by rotating the curve y equals x cubed over 3 as x varies from 0 to the fourth root of 15 about the x-axis. So pause the video, compute the surface area and input it in the box and note that there is already a factor of pi there so you only need to input the multiple. Okay, I hope you paused the video and found the surface area to be 7 pi. So we can find that by first taking the function f of x be x cubed over 3 we need its derivative in the integral formula. So that's 3x squared over 3, or just x squared. And what we really need is the 
square of this derivative, f prime of x squared, so that's x squared squared, that is x to the 4, and so uh, the surface area integral a is 2 pi times the integral from 0 to the 4th root of 15 of f of x, that is 3x cubed, x cubed over 3, times uh, the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared. So that's the square root of 1 plus x to the 4 dx. Now, um, here you may notice how this is almost the derivative of 1 plus x to the 4 to the 3 over 2. We just need to make sure that the constants are correct. So we would have that derivative um, in the integrand if we would have uh, 4x cubed times 3 over 2 times the square root of 1 plus x to the 4 dx. But of course we made some uh, mistakes. So for example, the factor of a third uh, was not included here. And then we need to correct for these constants. So we need to take two thirds and a fourth as well to fix these. And then we obtain the integral such as this that we can find an antiderivative for easily. So here we may uh, simplify slightly to get pi over 9 times the integral from um, 0 to uh, the fourth root of uh, 15 of, so let me write it in this way, of the derivative of 1 plus x to the 4 to the 3 halves. So this was the point, the x, because then uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that this is just uh, the net change of the antiderivative, that is 1 plus x to the 4 to the 3 halves as x goes from 0 to the 4th root of 15. And um, therefore we get pi over 9 times, um, well, the fourth root of 15 is what we need to raise to the, uh, to the fourth power. So that's just 15 plus 1, that's 16, uh, that we need to raise to the 3 halves. From this, we need to subtract. Um, for x equals uh, 1, we get, for x equals 0, we get just 1 raised to the 3 halves. Okay, so let's uh, compute this. First, uh, raising to um, the exponent a half, that means taking the square root of 16, that's 4 uh, cubed minus 1. So uh, 4 cubed is 64, minus 1 is 63, and therefore, that being 9 times 7, we get 7 pi. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.